everyone. Happy Tuesday. So, Joshua, did you hear about my epic uh, Twitter space last night? Refresh me, please. So, last night, I nailed Jeremy Boring's ass to a wall, mm -hmm. which is important because Jeremy Boring is the CEO of the Daily Wire, which is, like, Ooh. the largest, like, publisher of, like, content on Facebook and a pretty major conservative media organization. And I basically got him to admit that, well, if someone doesn't have the correct view on Israel, they don't have a job at the Daily Wire. Wow. That's pretty controversial. I, I, would, I was, you know, I mean, the, Israel is a foreign country. It's not America. The Daily Wire is supposed to be about America. So, I mean, I don't know that many people were shocked by it, but... I felt pretty good about, you know, asking, uh, crafting a question in such a way that, and maybe just annoying him because I basically asked him the same question several different times to try to get him to, to say the quiet part out loud. And on the third try, I did get him to say the quiet part out loud. Excellent. So I was pleased about that. Really cool. Well, do you know what was the straw that broke Ben Shapiro's back, so to speak? In terms of what? What Candace had said that led to her dismissal. I mean, we don't know exactly what. Well, of course, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring can't fire anyone from the Daily Wire. Or so they tell us, except that then Jeremy Boring gets on a Twitter space and admits that he fired Candace Owens. I mean, like, it's, it's hard to say exactly what was the straw that broke the camel's back. But I think it's significant that Candace Owens, like you could say, like I was kind of expecting there to be some sort of excuse, like Candace Owens was starting internal drama and she was a bitch to work with and blah, 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 blah. Like I was really expecting them to try to rationalize it in some way because I don't think anyone would have been surprised that Candace Owens was a pain in the ass to work with, right? But no, the re not ever. No, no, but, but she's, she's always been a pain in the ass to work with. They knew what they were getting into. But to have Jeremy Boring basically say that if you don't agree with him on Israel, you cannot work for the Daily Wire. I think it's pretty clear what Candace Owens said that broke the camel's back. Right. And I also think Candace Owens has, she's a Taurus, so they're very traditional, but she has an Aquarian moon. And Aquarians are very contrarian and very anti-authoritarian. So mm -hmm. it's sort of like if Candace isn't really evolved, She's going to be very Princess of Swords, the Aquarian side of her, like pushing and pushing and pushing, like, see, how much can I exactly get away with here? I think that, I'm guessing that's what happened, because uh, earlier we spoke about this, I think it was in January, because when, well, when the whole um, attack on Hamas and um, Israel took place. Mm -hmm. When was that? Was that December or January? October, October 7th, October. which according to uh, the Jewish rabbis is the worst day in the history of humanity. There has never been a worse day than October 7th. And obviously we agree with that. Otherwise we're anti-Semitic. Oh, I see. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it looked like before that she would have, we got the chariot for her before when we asked if she's going to get fired and it looked like she was going to steer her ship. I'm guessing that she was just trying to push it, um, but we should look into this, right? Yes. We should look into what happened. Well, there are there are several questions that I would like to ask. I mean, the first is, what hat? Like, I don't know what what do you think is the best way to approach this? Because I I feel like I could ask a variety of questions. I want to know why Candace was fired. I want to know that. Let's start there. Why was Candace fired? Well, uh, are we absolutely sure she was fired? Yes. Do we have to use that terminology, or can yes. we say what happened? No, we well. I am positive she was fired because in the Twitter space I was in yesterday, Jeremy Boring said she was fired. She He actually said that? Yes. Yes. And then later, someone pointed this out to me. I didn't realize it at the time. Later in the Twitter space, he started backtracking and saying, we parted ways. But at the beginning right. of the Twitter space, when he came in, he was very clear that Candace was fired. Interesting. In that okay. word specifically. Okay. <clears throat> Well, that, that'll be interesting when, when that gets reported on, because I wonder if she's even going to admit that she was fired and if she has another story to tell in regard to this. That'll yeah, be interesting. Is, did Candace admit it? Candace has only said, I am free. Come give me money on locals. I know. That'll be, that'll be putting Dave Rubin in a very interesting position, won't it? Well, I mean, yeah, but I also, I, it is weird. It is weird though, isn't it? Because people are saying like, you know, Dave Rubin can't possibly be censorious because he owns locals, but Dave Rubin doesn't really own locals anymore. Rumble owns locals. 
Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. They sold out to Rumble a long time ago. Dave got a bunch of stock. And so I know that he's on the executive team at Rumble, but I don't think he's actually making the day-to-day decisions about locals. So this isn't even his platform anymore. Okay. So <clears throat> moot point. So yeah. what happened with Candace Owens and the Daily Wire, correct? Yes. What happened with Candace Owens and the Daily Wire? Uh, and say when? When? Very well. Let's see. So, you got this guy here, King of Wands, right? Mm -hmm. King of Wands is Aries are typically, so we're talking about this leader who has his personal vision. So whoever, I don't know, Boring, do we know his sign? Uh, can someone look up Jeremy Boring's birthday to see if we can find it? If he's an Aries, that's he doesn't strike. He doesn't strike me as an Aries, if I'm honest about it. He strikes me as more like a water sign. Do you want me to Unless, get his picture up? Yeah, why not? I wonder if this is him. We guys got a king of, king of wands type guy here who's pretty fiery and at least a, a visionary. Let's see oh february 5th yeah so, so he is a an aquarian aquarian yeah um <clears throat> well somebody king of wands is here so whoever when, when we were first shuffling i got there were people that might not be visible they might but that were conflicting with candace i got two people but i don't feel like they're public i feel like these are the guys that are like the handlers behind the scenes but they might be following orders from this guy so with king of wands mm -hmm. king of wands says this is what we're gonna do he's like the entrepreneur he's very enterprising and then there was some dialogue and debate some kind of disagreement because the lover's card traditionally or or one of the earlier names of this card was called the brothers and it harkens back to Cain and Abel. So it can actually be a separation card. So there's some kind of dialogue and debate. And then you got the seven of cups, which is about temptation. This is sort of like pushing, um, maybe pushing the envelope either on their side, telling her what to do. I think that she was trying, they tried to silence her. Let's just see if we can get some more information about what happened with Candace they told her to shut up i think so mm -hmm. and candace and say, was like f you <laughs> sorry right. go ahead. yeah absolutely yeah and say say when for more information about this when let's see Yeah, I feel like I feel like she was probably looking to be out anyway because we get yeah. the nine of pentacles. I mean, she's going to be fine. She's going to land on her feet. She could create, you know, whatever she wants. And you got the three of discs. You know, this is about teamwork and giving things to the works. I think they worked really hard on this, everybody. But I feel like with the wealth card, she's not in the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like she's, <laughs> she's like, not in the club. That's a really good not, way to put it. She is not in the money club. She's not in the money club. And I feel like she wants to do her own thing. And she's, you know, she's she's very independent, very autonomous. But with this, I feel like there's more of like this energy of a team, mm -hmm. you know, uh, perhaps in this in instance, it's Team Israel. And they want to keep things the same and status quo. They don't need any dissenters. You know what I'm saying? I think they want to keep things in the family and they want to keep things status quo. And um, I don't think they're helping their greater causes. Perhaps also with the wealth card, we're talking about benefactors. They could have been pressure on the Daily Wire. From say, the people you don't in shut the money her club. Up. Yeah, from the people in the money club. If you don't shut her up or she needs to be quiet about this or she needs to, you know, something along those lines. That's my guess. You always want to follow the money. And this spread clearly says that. All right. So how is... Okay, let me go back to the last night's Twitter space. I want to know, how did Jeremy Boring feel about his performance in the Twitter space? Because it wasn't just me he was talking to. He was talking to Nick Fuentes. He admitted that he watches Nick. He admitted that he thinks Nick is very talented. And it's just like, it was, it, yeah. it was yeah, he even said he would support Nick having a debate with Ben Shapiro or talking to other Daily Wire hosts. That'll never happen. 
no, it'll never, of course it'll never happen. But, but how did, I mean, it just feels like, it just feels like it was a really horrible decision for him to join this Twitter space. And I understand we were talking about his company and like, there were several thousand people on it, but it feels to me like many more problems were probably created for him by joining the space and probably having the hubris to think he could out talk all of us than yeah. than it was worth in like the return that he got for it. So how does Jeremy feel about his performance in that space? Let's see. And what's his full name? Jeremy Boring. His last name is literally literally boring. <laughs> how did he feel about his performance last night? It was last night, right? Last night. And say when, please. When? Very well. How did Jeremy feel about his performance? Um, well, he just walked away from it and was sort of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the best behind. Um, did he have um, teammates with him that were also fighting for his arguments? No, there were a bunch of people listening, but they weren't participating. I see. Well, with three of discs, it looks like he feels like he gave it the works. I think he had talking points that he wanted to get across, and he did get across them. Again, um, in his mind, Aquarians can be very single-minded focused, actually. So with the three of discs, he thinks that he gave it the works, that he he did a good job. And then with the sun card, you know, oh, his he, ego oh, might, might be so big that he thinks that he had a command performance. Man. So what will be the impact on the Daily Wire as a result of not only what came out in this Twitter space, but as a result of Candace's firing in general? Like, is it going to impact them at all? Let's see. That's a good question. The impact of Candace's dismissal on the Daily Wire and say when, please. When? Um, I think they're going to be fine. God damn it. You got the temperance card. So they're probably going to um, expand in a lot of respects, expand and grow. It's also finding the right combination of things. So they're probably going to get somebody in her place that maybe just for optics does disagree. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Then you get the page of wands. So I think somebody knew. I mean, page of wands. Candace is very page of wands or princess of wandsy, right? So they're probably going to get somebody else in there. There's going to be some kind of new beginning. And then you have the devil. So with the devil, there's restriction, but there's stability. So it's sort of a matter of they're going to be reaching probably this very prosperous point, and then it's no more. But that's kind of okay. It's more systemized and, and stabilized. But the devil does talk about restriction. So, and wealth doesn't have a ceiling. So I feel like they're going to be doing very, very well, but then it is going to hit a wall. And with you know, times as they are and with inflation, I mean, they will at some point be a little bit stuck, but I don't think you're going to see that for a while. Wah, wah. So all the controversy again is for naught and the Daily Wire will continue to do what the Daily Wire does. Well, they will hit a wall at some point, but the devil also doesn't show that. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the devil, it's, it's all about um, presentation and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's going to be stabilized, but it's not going to be flourishing and growing it will grow more but then it will hit a wall so it's a it's a balance but i don't think we're going to see them file bankruptcy Boo. not anytime soon anyway it is, it is so frustrating to me how like these these shill conservative organizations and the shill conservative influencers get exposed over and over and over and you can see clearly like this is not real. This is manufactured, but it's over so quickly and people move on to the next thing and then they just keep doing what they're doing and then everyone's surprised when it all yeah. goes to hell. Yep. Yeah. Be very interesting. How did the Blaze, um, did they take a stance on this? I mean, I don't know. And, and that's a good question because, well, actually, let me ask this question because Lauren Chen was the host of this Twitter space. I think that Lauren Chen really stuck out her neck 
to host this Twitter space and especially having Nick on. Um, I think Lauren Chen has skewered her relationship with the Daily Wire. I think she's skewered her relationship with Prager U. I don't think she'll ever do anything with them ever again. Mm-hmm. Lauren Chen is currently associated with the Blaze. And I'm I like and I and, and like of the conservative organizations, I've always had kind of like a soft spot for the blaze. It's certainly not perfect, and there are people there that I don't like, but like I've had kind of like I hope that they don't fuck her over, mm-hmm. you know. But but how is how is doing this Twitter space going to impact Lauren Chen? Let's see. And say when, please. When? How will having done that Twitter space impact Lauren Chen? Mm-hmm. That's her name, right? Yes. Mm, not good. Oh, I knew it. I fucking Jeez. knew it. Jeez. Really? We got the disappointment card. Oh. So I feel like other people have been disappointed. Why did you do this? Again, we are in Mercury pre-shadow. Yeah. Mercury goes direct, excuse me, retrograde on April 1st, right? So we're already feeling the effects. So disappointment, she disappointed some people. And as a result, she's going to be disappointed, right? Then you get the page of swords. Not mm-hmm. good. Someone's this is talking. Like too much talking, like you had said, saying the silent part mm-hmm. aloud. She's going to probably be fired. Oh, yeah, I would be very sucks. surprised if she has. There's definitely going to be repercussions she's not going to like from having done that Twitter space. That sucks. I mean, I'm sure she'll be fine. Like, she's got a lot of, like, you know, she's got a lot of stuff going on. She's a smart person. She's really, you know, well put together. Like, I'm sure she's going to be fine. It just sucks. Like, the whole reality of this sucks. It's like, you question this at all in this space and your career, they're going to try to fuck with your entire career. Yep. Whatever. Whatever. This is, I mean, this is supposed to be America. These people are supposed to be advocating for, for free speech, but not when it comes to Israel. Well, I think that, you know, the, the the big argument is, you know, you have a right to free speech, sure, but there are going to be consequences to your free speech. You know what I mean? And that's probably the where they're coming from with this. I mean, I think that there's just so much emotion tapped into this, this one subject, that people don't see things clearly. You know what I mean? It would I be guess- nice to see them debate. I mean, Ben must have debated somebody about this. I'm sure he debated somebody, right? So- I, I, I... I have no idea. I mean, I think that Ben Shapiro likes to debate college students, but I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, but like, I, I think it's like, it's one of those things where it, I feel like they show their colors where it's like, this is, you cannot, like, I never gave two shits about Israel. I never cared about any of this stuff. I was just like, but it's one of those things where it's like, why can't I talk about it? Why can't I talk about it? Why can't I talk about it? Never yeah. wanted to talk about this subject before until you made it very clear to me that you were going to try to F up my life if I ask any questions at all. Right. So what questions don't you want me asking? Right. It's almost a matter of why why are why are people being silenced with different subjects, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, why can't we just talk about it? Even for further education and understanding from the other person's perspective, you know? Exactly, exactly. And like, it, it, and I've never like shied away from, I mean, I, like, I, I think it's really sad because like I had, like, well, I still have mem- like Jewish members of my community and I don't care if people are Jewish. It's never made a difference to me. But there's one specific member of my community that like, been my supporter for years, like, like very, like very pro Israel has taken trips to Israel. I really like had a great affinity for this person. I don't like had no ill will towards him at all. And like, I took, and, and he even said, he was like, let's have a conversation about it. And I was like, okay, let's mm-hmm. have a conversation. I, I'm totally open to this. I have no problem with it at all. And then he just stopped showing up and like unfollowed all my stuff. And I was like, what happened to having a conversation about this? Because like, I was actually, I remember like we got into it in one of my community zooms and I was actually, I I was feeling heartbroken that I disagreed with him because I didn't want to disappoint him, but it was so disappointing to me. The response where like, I couldn't even have a difference of opinion on this in a completely respectful way where I was like, I understand your perspective. I think you respect my, my ability to have a different position, but they won't talk about it. So you're sure though that it had to do with the Israel conflict? Yes, I am 1000% sure it had to do with that. 
And that was very disappointing to me because it was, again, this was someone that was, I mean, one of my strongest supporters. I absolutely adored him. Don't have a bad, I, I still to this day don't have a bad thing to say about him, but he was the one who turned his back on me. I didn't turn my back on him. I think it's important to remember the generational trauma that Jews may have experienced compared to non-Jews in the sense that there's this backstory in which they are aware of what has happened before to their culture. So I feel like their response is going to naturally be perhaps more defensive and more sensitive and understandably so. So I think that that's something to take into consideration. When I look at Ben Shapiro, I'm like, oh my God, this guy's off his rocker. Why can't you be more civil? If you think about it, you know, when we get triggered, right, about anything, we lose all of our sense of logic. I mean, if you've ever been in love and uh, something happens and and you get ignored or something like that, welcome to crazy town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like your, your, your whole body, your nervous system gets hijacked. And I think that if we look at the generational trauma of this, we'll be better able to understand why Jews are so adamant, or a lot of them are, in regard to this subject in which it's we're not talking about it. This is this is the case. Case closed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I but I feel it. like I feel like I'm fully willing to make accommodations mm -hmm. for that. Like, I understand mm -hmm. why you feel the way you do. I'm not going to try to change your mind. I'm not going to tell you you're a bad person. I'm not going to say any of this. But I'm allowed to have the opinion that I want to have, and I I feel mm -hmm. like I should be able to have that opinion without like you you turned your back on me. I didn't turn my back on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know what you're it, saying. it's just disappointing. It really is. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into some better questions about bridges, <laughs> bridge collapses and zombies. How about we do that? I think that's a really good idea. Excellent. Well, guys, welcome to Nothing Remotely Controversial. This is a show that Joshua and I do on Tuesday mm -hmm. evenings where we talk about the news and what is going on in the world. And Joshua, who is a professional psychic, <laughs> uses his psychic and astrology and tarot card prowess to help us peer beneath the surface and tell us what's really going on. And we do take your questions on this show. So if you would like Joshua to psychic a question, please send us in a super chat. We do ask that you keep it a high level question. Like is Donald Trump going to prison? Not <laughs> Not a low level question. Like, should I ask my my girlfriend to marry me like in public? Because you don't want to get told no to that, honestly. And also, if you want to connect with Joshua for, for personal questions, you can do that privately or on his channel. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Our first question is from Kazmar. Was the bridge collapse in Baltimore due to any sabotage? Now, Joshua, you haven't seen the bridge collapse yet. I have not. No. Let me let me show you Ooh. this video of the bridge collapse because this is this is a huge ass bridge. I've driven over this bridge. There were cars on this bridge. You see this ship right here? Yes, I see it. That that apparently the ship like hit something on the bridge, and then watch what happened. Load, damn it. Load, load, don't fail me. Fail her not, Bridge. Fuck you, Internet. Load. Why isn't it loading? It's a 23 second. Why is it fucking loading? Okay, I'm refreshing. I'm doing it. We're doing okay. it live. Thank you. Thank you for. Oh, refreshing. God damn it. Hang on. Stay fucking hell. Bridge collapse. There we go. Okay, now we can see that ship come in. It's a bit a little bit longer than I wanted to play, but whatever. The Beggar skippy chooser. I know. I know. Glad you weren't in Baltimore today, I bet. Oh my god. See? That was one fell swoop. That was that was no joke of a bridge collapse. <coughs> that was no fucking joke. Wow. Watch again, let's watch a shorter video yeah, thank again. You. Yeah. This bridge is over a mile long. There it goes. Oh Boom. My God. So were there cars in the bridge? Oh yeah, there were cars on that bridge. So what happened to the people? I, I some of them died. I guess some of them didn't die. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been following. That's one epic fucking bridge collapse, though, isn't it? Have you it ever is. seen anything like that? 
No. So, okay, if you were in your car, God forbid, if this happened, you were in your car and that happened, yeah. I'm guessing, well, you're going to you be can't, in water. You can't prepare for something like that. You can't prepare for something like that, but I'm guessing you get out of your car and try to swim to shore, shore right? Yeah, that would be my general plan, yeah. I'm wondering how people handled it and what kept them, like, the people that died, did they drown? Was it the, you know, was it a collision thing due to the, like, parts of the bridge breaking into the cars or something? That'll be interesting. Um, But let's answer Kasmar's question. I love the question. Yeah. And thank was you for the generous uh, super chat, Kasmar. Yeah, we appreciate you, Kasmar. Was the bridge collapse in Baltimore due to sabotage? Bridge collapse in Baltimore. And say when, please. When? Very well. Let's see. No, I think it was a bad call. Yeah. Which makes sense with Mercury in its shadow period, the eclipse, people not thinking. Oh, Even shit. It's, it was fucking Mercury retrograde. Well, it wasn't Mer in shadow. Mercury yeah. retrograde did it. Mercury in its shadow period. Also, I mean, there are some people that are still suffering effects from the time change. It could have been that. So we get the judgment card first, which is about, in this instance, poor judgment. And then you have the emperor. Again, Mercury is not only in its pre-shadow period, but Mercury is in Aries. And Aries likes to shoot first and ask questions later, as mm -hmm. you very well know. So I would never do that. Never, I know. Present company. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor is like, we need to do this. I think there was some big dick that was in charge of the whole thing. It was like shouting orders. And with the moon card, they were not seeing things clearly may have been intoxicated. I feel like with the judgment, three three major arcana in a row, I feel like with the judgment card, the emperor, whoever was at the helm or whoever was giving the orders, it was either the guy who was driving the, was it a boat or a yacht? It was like a, a container ship. Container ship. So whoever was steering the ship or giving the orders to the guy steering the ship, he was too overzealous and he wasn't seeing clearly. There may have been drugs involved with the moon card, but I don't think anything nefarious, no. All right, all right. Overzealous and 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 problem problematic judgment though. Okay, moving on. We've got a member chat from Bod who has been a member of the channel for five months. Five whole months. Do zombies still have a spirit, or since they're dead, is it gone? Ooh, that's a good question. Yep. Well, this is pr proposing that they're supposing that there are zombies. Yeah, supposing there are zombies. Do they have do they have an immortal soul, Joshua? Or has it been has it gone to the afterlife and the body just remains? <clears throat> I don't know if there's if we have anything such as zombies, but let's see what we get here in terms of uh <laughs> answer. I don't think that there are such things as zombies. However, I don't know. Um if you've been to San Francisco, I'm sure you've seen some zombies, right? Or Philadelphia. Or Philadelphia. So do zombies still have a spirit or since they're dead? Is it gone? Are there zombies? And say when? When? I'm curious to see if there actually are zombies. I didn't think that there actually were such things in real life. I don't think that there are anything such as zombies. No. It's a pre ocean because this guy's creating uh... things like zombies. Then you get the lover's card, then you get king of swords. Um, yeah, so there's no such thing as, as zombies, bot. Oh, well, good try, I bot. There's people that seem like zombies, you know, like Night of the like you saw this during COVID, like Night of the Living Dead walking around. I would guess that their spirit is uh, like suppressed, right? And I would say it's akin to depression, and, and the opposite of like depression is actually creation. So I feel like people who are zombie like they're not mm -hmm. creating. If you want to not be depressed, create anything anything cool moving on we've got terry will rfk's vp pick help him or hurt him so apparently rfk has selected a marxist 
to be his vice president. And I know this because Laura Loomer tweeted that she was a Marxist. And then some member of my community said, Carlin, she's using Marxist language. I recognize the intonations from watching socialism. So I trust, I like if, if people are saying that, I actually trust that that's true. So, yeah. you know, RFK showing his leftist roots, of course. Will this, will this woman help him or hurt him? I mean, for his vanity campaign, because yes, it's obviously his, not going to go anywhere. For his vanity campaign. Yeah. I can't stand that man. Yeah, I don't like him. I like some things he does, but not a lot. RFK's VP pick. Oh, hold on, hold on. How will RFK's VP pick affect him? And say when. When? Let's see. Mm. I don't think it's going to do much good, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might be some kind of balance. I feel like there's a balance. Like there's going to be people that are supporting his VP pick and other people that don't. Um, but it's mo moot point anyway. He doesn't have a shot in hell. So I don't know why he's doing this. Money to burn, I guess. For fun, something to yeah. do. Running for yeah. president can be exciting. You get to be the star of the show every That's day. True. You get to have people catering after you. You, you feel very important, even though you're really not, because you're not going to be president. Right. Yeah. True enough. All right. Moving on. Coaster Trek with the $5.64 uh, uh, Super Chat. Always with the odd numbers with Coaster mm -hmm. Trek. Do the spirits haunting the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, a.k.a. the Shining Hotel, find the ghost hunting tourists entertaining or annoying? I should have gone to the Shining Hotel when I was in Colorado. That was just a missed opportunity. How far away was it from where you were staying? I don't know. I didn't even think about it, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where it is in relation to where I was staying. Is it a tourist attraction? Oh, it is a tourist attraction. No, it's a hotel. So. Oh, you could actually stay there? I think so. Can't oh. you actually stay there? I mean, I would think like ghost hunters would want to stay there, right? I guess. Wow. All right, cool. So the spirits haunting the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, the Shining Hotel, do they find the ghost hunting tourists entertaining or annoying? Fascinating question. How do the spirits find the ghost hunters? And say when? When? It feels like a very adversarial relationship. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'm just not familiar with these ghosts or these hunters, but it would seem as if they're actually working together. So I stand corrected. Oh. You got the Eight of Pentacles, which is about learning. Maybe they want to like work with them and teach them something. Then you get the Two of Cups. So Aww. I would say that it's actually not adversarial. I just, I feel like the energy is just so weird that that might be why I picked up on um, difficulties. And then you get the strength card. So I feel like the, the strength card is like you're guiding the lion, right? Or you're mm -hmm. closing the lion's mouth. So I feel like they're actually trying to help. I wouldn't say, so is it entertaining or annoying? I would say that it's more of a, almost like a, um, like a, a tutelage mm -hmm. relationship. Maybe we should go stay at the hotel and do a seance. Maybe. Would you, we, yeah, we, we, because you, because you won't stay at the Lizzie Borden Airbnb. I'm not going to stay overnight. I will go to the Lizzie uh, Borden house with you and we will spend time there, but I'm not going to sleep in Lizzie Borden why? Or Borden's bed because I like my sleep. And I think, it's, I mean, you're not sleeping in their actual bed. It wasn't the actual thing that they slept in. It was it's just the, the room. same walls. It's the same no, energy, the same, the same woodwork, bed. probably. I would hope it's not the same bed, but you don't what, know. One night would not kill you, Joshua. They have a perfect room. It's got two separate bedrooms and then a, a, a sitting room, and we can do we can do the show from there. I can do the show from there. It you gives never me give, the heebie you, you never give me anything I want. All I ever wanted was to do a show from the Lizzie Borden Hotel, and you wouldn't even give me that. And you can. You can. <laughs> we, we can do a show. I just I feel very weird about sleeping in that house, especially... Well, I covered the case, too. Like, I know a lot of it's and bitsy pieces about the case. And, you know, we're going to probably want to get high if we're, like, hanging out at night together. We would never get high. Well, that if would we did, never happen. that would be really bad because <laughs> then 
I'd be like super freaking like sensitive and open and it would be a nightmare. And Why are probably... you making this sound like the most amazing idea that I've ever had and yet you still won't do it? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Who knows? I might have a change of heart. The anniversary is coming we... up this summer, by the way. What if we, the anniversary... What if we got people to crowdfund this? We could crowdfund the entire thing. We're crowdfunding your flight from Los Angeles out to Boston. We're crowdfunding the night at the hotel. We're crowdfunding a car. We're, crowd we're crowdfunding literally fucking everything you have to do with Joshua. If we hit a certain point, come on. If you feel that is the best, the the the, the most exciting, always follow your excitement. If we can get it crowdfunded, I will bite the bullet and I will do it. Yes. You heard him. We have him on tape now. If we crowdfund this, Joshua will come and stay and we'll do a seance at the Lizzie Borden Hotel. <laughs> and nothing could go wrong with this plan. Nothing could go wrong with this plan at all. All right. We're definitely not going to get possessed or anything. Moving nope. on. Deb wants to know what will happen to Planet Fitness now that women are complaining about men in the women's locker room? Men, women are. Oh, God, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So I what's happening? That. Yeah. So there, there, are, there are like these pictures coming out on social media where women in the women's locker room, at, which, by the way, the women's locker room at Planet Fitness is like the weirdest women's locker room I've ever actually been in because no one actually changes. Hmm. Like it's weird. Or they go into like like the changing. So like I, I, I honestly have like never been in a women's locker room where people don't just change in the locker room. That and is like it, it, it's really weird. And so like so like I and, and for I, I wanted to just say that for people who don't know, like that's at least my experience. I don't know if other people have had that experience. But so if a man who is trans is going into the women's locker room and changing and doing a whole rigmarole, that is actually something that's going to stand out as like weird and out of place in the relation to like a planet fitness. So like there are these pictures of men coming out where they're in there. They look like men, they're shaving, they're doing men things in the women's locker room. And then the women are posting them on social media and the women are the ones getting their memberships canceled. Cause planet fitness is like, we need to be inclusive, bro. And okay, so the women are getting in trouble for posting the pictures. Yep. Essentially, which, you know, I mean, I do think that makes sense. Two wrongs don't make a right, right? Like, yeah, no, I, I kind of disagree I, with that if I'm honest. I, I agree. Yeah. You agree, right? So, like, yes, I, 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 okay, think of like if you have your, your daughter, um, or, you know, even you in a women's locker room, like that's a space for women to actually see. A man there can be very disconcerting and very problematic. I understand their point. But I also think that these trans people, if they go into the men's locker room, I don't know what their concerns are. Are they worried about getting beaten up? Uh, what's like the issue? But they really should, I would think, if they had the anatomy, it'll be interesting. Like if they have the anatomy of men, shouldn't they stay in the men's locker room? But what happens if you have somebody who's actually gone through the procedures? Well, I mean, these are, these are the questions and I, and I agree, like you shouldn't be taking pictures of people in the locker room. I actually right. agree with that. I think the better yeah. course of action would just be to go to the front desk and be like, what the, what just happened? But, but I can also see the point of like, and I say this saying you shouldn't be taking pictures in the locker room. Right. If Planet Fitness is refusing to do anything about it and you keep seeing this dude in the locker room with like little girls or whatever, I'm also like, that's a little creepy and I'm not comfortable with that. And if the yeah. if the organization doesn't want to do anything about it, I will shade their asses on social media. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I feel like you, you don't necessarily need photo photography in order to prove this, maybe like eyewitnesses. And I would I, I, I think I would probably buy maybe talk to the um, receptionist or whatever. And if it falls on deaf ears, I mean, I would deaf ears. I would totally, I would, I would go to the newspapers and make a big stink about it. Mm -hmm. So yep. interesting. So what will happen to planet fitness? Yeah. That's going to be really interesting. Well, I mean, don't you think at, at some point what we're going to have to do, and if we have so much more exposure to this sort of thing, there will be a third locker room or a gender neutral. We already have gender neutral bathrooms, by the way. There's a good solution, but gender neutral bathrooms creep me out because what they do normally with gender neutral bathrooms is they just like 
they just convert the women or men's room into gender neutral bathrooms. I'm sure you've had this experience and it's oh, like, I've, I've gone to, it's, yes, yes. it's very disconcerting. Like, it's not like I, I can understand bathrooms where like you, like you have kind of like a general sink area mm -hmm. and then you have women on one side and men. Like I can kind of wrap my head around that. Mm -hmm. It is always disconcerting to me when I go into a bathroom at like one of these leftist events and I walk out of the stall and I see a man there. I'm like, See, okay, I don't mind because I, you know, if I go out in West Hollywood, there's most of the bathrooms are um gender neutral. And what it is, I mean, it doesn't really bother me, maybe because I'm intoxicated, but you have the line for the urinal. So I'm in the urinal and I don't mind taking a leak with women being around. Do you know what I'm saying? And they go into the what's it called? The stalls. stalls. And it's kind of fine. Like I don't get what the I don't think that that's really like a problem. Do I don't like I, mean? I don't like being in the same room as urinals. They stink. I'm sorry. Men's bathrooms smell way worse than women's bathrooms to a significant sure. degree. I don't I'm, like that. I'm sure you're right. I've never been in a ladies bathroom. Not that I can remember. Um, so, yeah, fascinating. OK, so what's going to happen to Planet Fitness? What's going to happen with Planet Fitness? And say when? When? Because the girls don't care. I mean, at least, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not, you know, I don't know. I think it's fine in, uh, in this in this area. So Planet Fitness is going to be holding on really, really strongly. There's going to be a certain level of defensiveness. And then they're going to make a big, big point and be like, we want this. And they're going to be taking some stand. And believe it or not, they're going to be fine. <laughs> I think they're going to hold true and say, this is this is the way it is. And depending on, you know, where their headquarters are, they'll probably get the backing. I, I wonder what the their headquarters is, is in New Hampshire. They're, they're from New Hampshire. No. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you got the sun card here. So unless they do a complete 360 and say, Mia Coppola, you know, you guys are right, which I doubt they will do because there's no, defensiveness. They can't here, right? do that. They can't do that. Yeah. They're probably going to double down and they're actually probably going to get rewarded. Are there, I mean, is is New Hampshire getting more lefty? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm just like, I, I don't even care. I'm like, the world is going to a hell in the handbasket anyway. So I hope it's not getting more lefty, but who knows? Maybe. <sighs> Yeah, they're going to be fine. They'll probably get accommodation, if anything. All right, moving on. Deb wants to know, China has been buying land, buying U.S. land for a long time. Now they're buying U.S. food brands. Is this for nefarious purposes? Ooh, let's see. And say when? When? What are you doing, China? Let's China. See. China. Nefarious purposes? I mean, you got the Wheel of Fortune, so there might be like some kind of like opportunity. And then you got the judgment card, which is about, you know, it depends on who's making the judgments. I will say that according to Seven of Cups, there may be some temptation down the line, but I don't think they're doing it right now for like any nefarious purposes. But I think that with, with all of these things that they're buying, they are going to have more options. So I think down the line, something could be used for um, problematic things, but that's not like the immediate intention, according to our cards. All right. Fair enough. Bosefis says, Carlin, I mounted the like button sloppy 57 guys if you have not yet mounted the like button please go ahead and do that for us and if you're new to the show we do this every tuesday night i hope you guys uh you know stick around we get we actually have more viewers than normal josh we got a whole bunch of we got like 650 wow. people watching right now almost 200 on youtube almost 500 on uh on twitter oh won't goodness. it be fun someday if we can do super chats on twitter and people can send us questions from there too that would be awesome i'm sure that it's coming around the corner I sure. I really do hope because I I get so much more. You should stream your streams to Twitter because I get a much bigger audience on Twitter than I do on YouTube. Much okay. bigger. I'm gonna try that. I'll try that on Friday. All right, fair enough. 
Uh, yes. Deb says on April 17th, the Supreme Court will be deciding on the one common felony charge that put J Sixers in prison. Most lawyers are saying it was used unconstitutionally. How will they rule? Okay. So can we say how will the January Sixers fare in the verdict? Yes. Is that going to help us determine yes. the answer? Perfect. So will you ask that? How will the January Sixers fare in the Supreme Court verdict? And say when, please. When? Very well. Let's see. How will the January Sixers fare in the Supreme Court? verdict uh, i think they'll be okay so you got the king of cups here which is good nice there might be a certain level of empathy you got the victory victory card then you get the four of cups i mean it's surprising to me but that's what the cards say i mean it's good what does it mean that the four of cups is last it's meh it's like all right comfort not needing anything else um, it's kind of like, but they got the victory, but they got the victory card. And then it's like, is yeah. it like, is it like, um, like what is, what, what is the term? It's like anticlimactic. Yes. Anticlimactic. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yeah. I agree with you. Maybe it's a matter of that they get a victory and then somebody appeals it. Is that possible? I mean, you can't be tried double jeopardy, right? For the um, well, I, I could see it being one of those things that like. They've already like been sent to prison or fined or had their lives destroyed over this bullshit. And then years later, like the Supreme Court says, oh, psych, it was all unconstitutional in the first place. Right. And right. it's like, you know, great. That feels really good. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get I don't get my life back. Yeah, it's almost with four of cups. One of the the meanings of it is it's like you want something so much and you kill yourself to get it. And then you get it and you're like, you're like, this is it. Right. And like, I don't yeah. even want it anymore. Yeah. I, I gave so much for this and I couldn't, I, I have nothing. I don't even have joy about getting what I, because they've been put through the ringer so much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, th I think that's it. I mean, it, Four Cups also could be a certain sense of like, you know, shock. I mean, after going through this, mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, that's good to know. We'll be looking forward to that. I, it's going to be good if it's ruled unconstitutional anyway. So that'll be good for not good for the January 6 people necessarily, but good for other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Reagan says I'm going undercover at us. I'm inspiring other people to go undercover at socialist conferences, Joshua. That's fantastic. I'm going undercover at a socialist conference tomorrow. How will it go? And Reagan is a Libra. All right, Reagan. Let's see. How's your socialist conference going to go, you little spy? Mm -hmm. Nosy Libra spy. I love it. <laughs> Let's see. How will it go? How will it go for Regan and your socialist conference tomorrow? And say when, please. When? Let's see. Interesting. Well, you have the Ace of Swords, so you're definitely going to be getting a new idea in, in, in regard to how this whole, or new ideas in regard to how these whole things operate. You got the Four of Swords, which is interesting. Four of Swords is usually a postponement card, so I don't know if your hmm. deal is going to get postponed and whatnot. If it's not postponed, uh, I would say that there's definitely going to be some like serious thinking about it, right? Like you're going to have to like sit with it. I don't think it's going to be like completely on the nose. That makes sense. Um, actually, from my experience, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're going to have to sort of process it. And then you get the six of cups. So I, I think that six of cups is one of the best cards. You know, there might be, you know, a certain level of innocence that you find out at this, this conference. There may be, I think on a negative level, something involving children that probably doesn't register well with you because this card is associated with kids. So that might be the, the most um, controversial aspect of your, your trip. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. I would definitely give yourself more time to get there. Make sure you're, you have enough rest because the Four of Swords is one of those like calls. Like you got to make sure you're getting your rest. So be sure to do that. Okay, Regan? 
Yeah. Everyone send positive vibes to Reagan tomorrow yes. for the uh, the conference. Positive <laughs> vibes. <laughs> protection. Oh, I'm a tiny hole. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more questions left. Bosibus says several GOP House members are retiring. The theory is they are selling us out so Hakeem Jeffries can become Speaker. Joshua, will the Democrats gain control of the House through unnecessary Republican stupidity? I see. Okay, so how will the Dems fare in the fill in the blank? Will will the will Hakeem Jeffries accidentally become the Speaker of the House? Okay, let's see. Will Hakeem Jeffries become the Speaker? How will Hakeem Jeffries become the Speaker? And say when, please. When? Very well. Will he become the speaker? Hmm. Interesting. Um, we don't have any definitive answer right now. There's a lot of pressure going on right now. Are they really needing a speaker? Is that the case? Well, you do need a speaker of the house. Yeah. I mean, the house already <laughs> has a speaker, but now they're they're upset at Mike Johnson. They want to Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to do a motion to vacate, or she already did one, or something like that. And so they want to remove him because he's not doing what they wanted him to do, which was completely and totally predictable. But the problem is that all of these House GOP representatives are deciding to retire. And they don't have the margin to withstand this. So literally, the Republicans are just fucking themselves over. Yeah. So you get the eight of wands. There's a lot of information that's going to be coming back and forth. And then we have the high priestess, which is water. I don't think he's going to get it if I had to make the call. I, I really think with the high priestess is a gracious influence that enters the matter. All of this fire is going to be put up by the high priestess. I think this is much ado about nothing. I'd be surprised if he gets it. All right. Fair enough. Did the USA have any part in that Moscow shooting? And are we in World War III already without? No. Well, those could potentially be two separate questions, but. Well, let's see. So the Moscow shooting, you know much about that? Um, it was a terrorist attack in Moscow. That's right. So was the U.S. involved in that attack? Yep. We should talk about this now while we can, right? Probably should, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. With because even like with the COVID stuff, like you can't even speak on it, right? We're not allowed to talk about anything anymore. This is no longer a free speech country. Let's see. Do the US have a part in Moscow shooting? US have a part in the Moscow shooting. US have a part in the Moscow shooting. And say when? One. Let's see. Peace. Tower. 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 No, tower. but we have we start tower. with the moon. So there's some kind uh -huh. of like perception no. going on here. Yeah. Then we have a king of cups type guy. And okay. then we have an emperor. Oh, yeah. This is power. I I I believe that in a roundabout way it might not be um it might not be completely direct, but I feel like there are powers that be that I think knew in the U.S. for sure. Because you got the King of Cups and you got the Emperor with the Moon, so you have guys that are in power here, and then you have the Moon, which is which is duplicitous, right? So like so the I, CIA. Yeah, yeah. Interesting with King of Cups, Cancer. Not that like why would Elon Musk care to do this but you know somebody under the sign of cancer and somebody who is like an emperor i guess it could be an aries but the emperor usually is just uh, a world leader so all right yeah, all right starbright asked was the key bridge disaster deliberate now we kind of already answered this earlier it was just basically someone being stupid and dumb overzealous so sorry about that starbright we already answered that at the beginning of the show but bad you judgment. bad judgment and then bmac wants to know how does Trump look in November? Good question. That is a very good question. Yep. Good so question. So how, how does he look in November? Like, is he going to win? 
Is Trump going to win in November or is he going to prison? <laughs> How is Trump going to fare in November in the election, right? Yep. And say when? When? Very well, let's see here. Interesting. Well, you got the full card. This is a wild card. Anything, Anything can, happen. can happen. There is um, harmonious change around him. And then we end with Queen of Swords. And I feel like that's a little bit problematic because Queen of Swords is, you know, she's she's little, she's intelligent, but she's a little bitter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's a little bit like the scorned lover. Like, how dare you do that to me? You know what I mean? So I feel like there's just, it's so wild right now. I would say it ending with the Queen of Swords, I think it's really going to be up in terms of, of lawyers. The Queen of Swords is very lawyer-like. Um, let's see if we got... Yeah, I, I think it's too soon to tell um, with that fool card. But I would say with the Queen of Swords, well, let's see how he's going to feel at the end of November about the election. Can we sure. look at that real quick? Yes. How will Trump feel at the end of November? How will Trump feel at the end of November? Say when, please. When? It looks like he's going to be doing fine, although there's going to be a lot of pressure around him. You got the justice card, so I think he'll feel satisfied. There will be the devil card, which makes sense with the uh -oh. team charges against him still. Yep. But then he's going to be very happy. All right. All right. Fair enough. We got a couple more questions real mm -hmm. quick. Uh, Crowd by the media says, in a dream that I had, I was an alien who was imprisoned in this current reality. I understood that I was serving a life sentence on Earth before I could return to the ether. What could that mean? Interesting. Who was imprisoned in this current reality. I understood that, that I was serving a life sentence on Earth. Let's see. Interesting dream. What does this mean? And say when, please. When. So, this is interesting. So, I feel like what this means in real life for you is that something has gone on by itself by date. So, oh. like, the symbolism is, like, you're in a job and a relationship or something that is just horrible. So, you need to get the hell out. And you got to balance things. This is your subconscious being like, this isn't right. You need to go. You need to leave. And you need to create a new identity. That's oh, that's, that's good advice. I was going to be like, we're all kind of aliens on Earth, at, like here for a life sentence, aren't we, though? In yeah. some respects, we are. Two words. All right. JP says, thanks for challenging Jeremy on firing Candace. You always keep it real. 100 tarot cards is satanic Ooh. trash, though. Be well, you know, thank you for the money, but we disagree. They're cardboard, bro. They're little. Thank you for the money, but they're, they're card. Joshua, the tarot cards are cardboard, right? Um, I, they're, they're I don't know. Are these cardboard? I don't, well, I mean, they're like a heavy stock paper. Like, it's yeah, heavy not, stock paper. And can yeah. paper be satanic? I mean, if you want, if somebody wants to label something satanic, that's within their right. And then for them, it would work in a satanic kind of way. So it's like whatever you're projecting. Do you um, fear, do you fear for your immortal soul? No, no. <laughs> All right. Last question of the night. Kristen wants to know what's going to happen to Diddy. Good Will question. people be exposed? I know. Right. Is it drugs? Is it sex? Is it a combination? Everything everything what's gonna happen with diddy will people be exposed and say when when let's see yeah okay tower tower oh, tower, tower 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 
No. <sighs> I mean, so what's going to happen? I mean, it's going to be a transition. Um, interesting. Yeah, you have some kind of transition. You might be found innocent. Aww. However, this or there might be children involved. <laughs> yeah, that's another aspect of, of Six of Cups. And then you get the King of Cups. So I don't feel like... I don't think this is going to be like a um, an Epstein thing where all these people were on the island or anything like that. I think with King of Cups, um, there probably is going to be one one main person that is um, exposed in regard to this. I don't know Diddy's birthday. I doubt he's a water. I doubt he's a water sign. No, he's not a water sign. Please. I, yeah, I, I'd be very surprised. Diddy. Let's see. What, what's his birthday? Diddy Combs. I'm guessing Earth. 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 No. Interesting. Really? Prince Harry named the 30 million Sean Diddy's Combs sexual assault lawsuit. That's interesting. I wonder, maybe this is somebody else. Maybe that oh. that's really interesting. But let's see his um birthday. I'm curious. I yeah, it's a Scorpio. He is a water sign. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We were both wrong. We're both wrong. It happens on yeah. occasion. Not often. Not often. It does, it does happen. Yeah. Sure. All right, guys, that's all we have for tonight. Um, Joshua, do you have any final words of wisdom before we wrap up? Yeah, we're in eclipse season, full swing. Mercury's in its pre-shadow period. So go with the flow. Try to relax. Um, the intensity might be really kicked up a bit. I'd say with Mercury in its pre-shadow going retrograde on April 1st and Mercury being in retrograde, one of the big things is to always assume positive intent. Because sometimes something will happen and all of, all of a sudden we're going to jump and say, you're doing this, aren't you? I know what you're doing, but we might be wrong. And then it's like we feel really bad and then we're the ones apologizing. So always do your due diligence before assuming anything nefarious. Uh, check and double check your work. Give yourself time to go to the airport, stuff like that. And I think the big important thing is to let the universe have its way with you during this period. Like it's a very intense kind of energy and the eclipse season season is going to help us to get to where we need to go. It's going to course correct. So if you've been doing all the right things, you know, just let, let yourself float to where you need to go. And if you need to make any changes, well, make them um, easily and gently for yourself and, and just go with the flow. All right. Sounds good. Guys, we do Nothing Remotely Controversial on Tuesday nights at 930. Come back and join us ne next week if you like. Please mount the like button on the way out the door, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.